Hello, this is Canadian Independent Media. My name is Will Smith. This week we'll be looking at Canada's new infrastructure bank, the cannabis update, Germany and the clean revolution, and how pesticides are on our dinner plates. First, here's Jack Etkin with a piece on Canada's infrastructure bank. Jack? Thanks, Will. Uh, the infrastructure bank was approved this summer by Canada's parliament. That was done largely in secret. There was quite a fight about the bank in the Senate, but that story was kept quiet too. Uh, the bank is expected to be up and running with, I believe, $35 billion in funding by the end of this year. That money, plus corporate money, will be used for infrastructure projects, hence the name the Infrastructure Bank. So bridges, roads, transit, new electricity, water, etc. But we will have to pay the corporations back for their investment in our infrastructure. And they plan to be paid back a lot of money. So we can expect our new infrastructure, roads, transit, water, etc., is going to be sort of privatized and the private owners are expecting to make a lot of money from it. Uh, we could, of course, just borrow the money, as we always have done, at a lower rate of interest than we will have to pay the corporations. Or we could, of course, use the government-owned Bank of Canada to give us the money for zero interest. But Corporate Canada will not allow that. Uh, so the plan is that in the future we will have to pay big business when we want to use our basic infrastructure. And they will also, of course, have increasing control over our infrastructure. Here's what the Canadian Union of Public Employees says about Mr. Trudeau's new infrastructure bank. So Corporate Canada is of course very happy about all of this, especially since the new CEO of the bank spent 30 years with uh, RBC. And we all know how much the Royal Bank is concerned about Canada and Canadians. You can see why the corporate media is keeping the story quiet. Uh, we Canadians should really try to keep a close eye on this new infrastructure bank, but that may be hard to do when both the politicians and the media seem to want to keep it secret. And back to you, Will. Thanks, Jack. As we transition to a new, greener world, some disruptive technologies are actually helping us get there faster than we might expect. So, for example, this week in the UK, legislation was passed making sales of new gasoline and diesel vehicles completely illegal by law starting in 2040. Fortunately, the clean revolution is already so far along that this will occur by itself more as an economic necessity and perhaps as early as 2025 or 2030. This video, a presentation on the transition from petroleum to electric vehicle systems, is available at tinyurl.com slash clean revolution. In it, you will see just how fast a changeover can be made when it makes economic sense and why it does make sense in the current world we live in. Other people are not as patient as the politicians. In Berlin, Mikey Majewski says she was always sick of just being against something. So she and fellow concerned German citizens are in fact making the transition from a fossil fuel based society to one which has a sustainable economy and renewable energy resources. She says it is about people coming together and taking action, working together with hands, hearts, and minds. In the wedding district of Berlin, the city where she and others in the German transition movement live, the activism she likes takes the form of raised garden beds. The community is named Himmelbeet, Skybed. 
This urban garden space has around 300 raised six foot by three foot garden beds, 120 of which are community beds and 170 of which can be rented. Rental is about $100 per year, which includes water and some advice. Community service of 10 hours per person is also a requirement. Currently, there are three times as many applicants as there are spaces, so gardens are allocated with a lottery system. The social aspect here is almost more important than the ecological one, says Felix Lodes, who is a manager of the project. A German architectural award was recently awarded to him will be activists because they built a cafe out of reclaimed wooden pallets. Shifting to the week's news in cannabis, a lawsuit was filed in New York State against the U.S. federal government, challenging its official stance, saying that cannabis has no medicinal value. The complaint claims the federal government has admitted repeatedly in writing and implementing national policy reflecting that cannabis does in fact have medical uses and can be used and tested safely under medical supervision. On that basis, the federal government has exploited cannabis economically for more than a decade. The complaint even claims the federal government, under Richard Nixon, rushed to outlaw marijuana in 1970, quote, so that African Americans and war protesters could be prosecuted and incarcerated without identifying the actual and unconstitutional basis for the government's actions. In Haiti, a pilot project is underway to test the usability of hempcrete as a building material. With support from governments and the private sector in Finland, Ireland, and Holland, Mobile Ecole, a school, teaches hemp farming, processing, and home building to natives of Haiti. As the fumes of our petroleum civilization run out and continue to shift us towards our beautiful, sustainable future, we will continue to bring you the stories which keep this in focus. And here's Ed Johnson with our next story. About a month ago, I reported on the use of Roundup on local fields as a weed killer. At that time, several jurisdictions, the state of California and the World Health Organization, both classified this toxin as a probable carcinogen, and that was a step up from possible carcinogen. However, as it turns out, that was only the tip of the iceberg. I remember back in the 70s when it was discovered that the largest lab facility in the United States was falsifying tests that were the basis for regulating pesticides and chemicals. The Environmental Protection Agency estimated some 80% of the data was either non-existent, fraudulent, or invalid. Thinking now I was being protected by government agencies, the issue was likewise dropped from media reports. Today, however, in a release of more than 20,000 documents collected by author Carol Van Strum, who herself instigated court challenges when she found out that 2,4-D, an herbicide still in use in Canada and the U.S., and other chemicals used in Agent Orange, were being used on forests near her home. In those papers, now dubbed the Poison Papers, which can be accessed through the links below, we find out that industry and government colluded to hide the facts from the public for this incident. In a secret meeting to which only chemical industry lobbyists and regulators attended, including Canada's Health Protection Branch, they plotted a way to make this problem disappear. And a majority of the poisons were never retested. But collusion is nothing new and everyone should be aware by now that corporations control the regulatory bodies. But to know that this has been happening since the 20s and 30s, as the poison papers attest, is indeed concerning. And current testing practices for these chemicals in widespread use test only the active ingredients, not the added and secret so-called inert ingredients. And there are no long-term studies assessing the impact of synergistic effects of exposure to many different kinds of chemicals. Jeffrey Smith, Institute for Responsible Technology, has also been sounding the alarm on the use of herbicides used on genetically modified foods. Did you know that despite pressure from the Gates Foundation and the biotech industry, that GMOs are banned in 38 countries, including half of the EU? Seriously damaging people's health and even death are of no concern to the profit-hungry chemical industry. And whistleblowers working in these industries risk losing their jobs, reputation, and even their lives as well. So what can we do? Our job is to demand food free of chemical and genetic tampering and let the precautionary principle be our guide.
Well, that's it for this week, folks. Thanks for watching our show. Be sure to leave a comment if you'd like to voice your opinion. Tell your friends, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our channel. I'm Will Smith. See you next week.